Josh Hartnett plays David Ross in Black Mirror Beyond the Sea. I'm Matt Noble at Gold Derby. I want to start off by asking you, Josh, what was the biggest challenge in playing David in this Black Mirror world? Uh, well, you know, the biggest challenge was clearly, in my opinion, clearly uh, the the kind of emotional scenes in which the you know there we don't have to worry about spoilers because the movie's been out or the show's been out for a while uh when his family gets killed um that that day we we shot that for over two days and it was uh yeah it was it, it was extraordinarily emotional and you know going there from a from an acting point of view um is never fun uh to a place like that and then the rest of it was was truly a joy. Like we had so much fun making this. The thing about Black Mirror that I've always enjoyed, I've always loved, is that because Charlie Brooker is a he's, he comes from the background of satirical comedy, every one of his shows, no matter how dark Black Mirror gets, there's always a humorous side to it, and he finds it hilarious. So if he's on set watching what you're doing. <laughs> It doesn't matter how dark it's getting. He finds it utterly side splittingly funny. And, uh, and so we had, we actually had a really nice, we had a lot of fun making this uh, in spite of the subject matter. What, what was uh, something that you found particularly fun or, or something you found particularly funny in the, in this uh, making this episode? Well, well, working with, working with Aaron was a lot of fun. I think he's, He's a super talented, obviously, uh, but he is one of the most generous actors you'll ever work with. He's he's utterly professional, but he's just a lot of he's just an easygoing human being. Um, and so we had we had a really nice time uh, being on that spaceship and kind of going through all of that that emotional roller coaster together, all those little pieces, and kept pushing it to be weirder and weirder. And I. I really respect uh, John Crowley as well. The director um, have you know always liked his work, and so we just the three of us really just pushed ourselves to be as creative as possible in that kind of incredible set. Um, being able to shoot something uh, that is sort of retro futuristic and reminds me of like what you know sci-fi looked like when I was a kid was was so much fun that set was incredible um yeah and it was just i mean the whole the whole experience was really really nice and i got to shoot it at home i live in the uk and uh and we were shooting at twickenham studios for most of it okay. we shot in spain for a bit as well but it was nice to be able to kind of have everybody where i live bring everybody back down to my house and have barbecues and things like that while we were shooting and it was it was nice it's cool you got to host everyone that's really lovely I have a host. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, what? Uh, so, as you said, like, there's a huge trauma that your character goes through at the beginning of the yes. film. Uh, and, like, so you've got that intense darkness and going through that. And then the rest of the film, your character's having to process that trauma. Like, so you've got that mm -hmm. intensity, but then that sort of more quiet, reserved, but there's still that darkness and struggle there. How did you sort of switch gears from that sort of scene where everything's happening to when it becomes a bit quieter, but there's still stuff going on in his head? Well, you know, something magical about making films as opposed to making a piece of theater, you get time in between. Yeah. You know, like I, we, we shot the first bit, uh, which had the kind of, you know, the horribly traumatic scene in it. Mm. Uh, in Spain at the very beginning of production. Then there was a week where they went off and shot the stuff that just Lana and Cliff were doing together. Uh, and they shot that in Kent. And then I was brought back in and Aaron and I then shot all the stuff on the spaceship. And there's a very clear progression in that, in that section. So I got to, you know, kind of come at it like it was its own separate kind of film arc. Um, obviously we're going back and forth for the very beginning uh, between the spaceship and uh, and Earth, but all of that, as far as the spaceship was concerned, was pretty clear as well. I I felt like what I loved about playing the character was this sense of optimism and 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 forward thinking uh, 
scientific yet sort of poetic character was placed in this enormous under this enormous stress stress and isolated to the point that he would have entirely lost his mind and you know contemplate suicide obviously probably would have committed suicide had the lifeline not been given to him by cliff to go step back down to earth and his body and then it becomes more complicated um because then it becomes sort of in david's mind a love triangle and i find it i found the journey for david really touching and then obviously at the end i think um you know it's very it has a very dark turn even darker than i imagined it when i was reading the script but uh in a way there's a logic to it the dark logic to it but it's it's said a couple of times in the script i think it's only in the in the show once but it's a two-person mission and without two people you can't like both die right so if one person dies the other one dies up there it's a three-year mission they're only a year and some into it so they've got a lot of time left mm. what what i assumed was going to happen is that he was going to kill cliff and then go back and pretend to uh be cliff with lana or at least you know let lana know we're you know it's me and she can you know discover something in herself because she clearly david was opening up some something in her uh when when they were they were communicating and then maybe they could have a relationship but that wouldn't work because the ship wouldn't function with just one of them and, and he leaves it in cliff's hands at the end what will happen you know mm -hmm. and it could you know, there was no way for them to survive the way that they were to keep going the way that they were going. It was just too, too difficult for David. So he would have shot himself off into space. And, uh, and so it had to be kind of, it's either, yeah, I mean, it's very dark, but dark logic, but there is logic there anyway. So yeah. And I think um, what you like, what you thought was going to happen is, as I was watching it, where I thought the the thing was going as well. Uh, so it's like a, a that's what's so great about yeah. that's what's so great about Charlie. He's always playing with your expectations in such a brilliant way, and you know, you know, it's going to be dark, so you expect a thing that's very dark, but then it becomes somehow darker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Since we're on it, that final scene. Um, yeah where he comes back and you're just sitting there and you push up the chair. Uh, it's so quiet, but there is so much like that's so powerful a moment. What's going on in your head as an actor and what, what do you also, what do you maybe think is going on in David's head as that sort of seat gets pushed towards Charlie? For me, um, in my understanding of David uh, was that, that last gesture is an offer, you know? Do you want to continue or do you want to end this? It's in your, uh, and it's, he's left the decision up to Cliff and he's offering him the choice, you know? Basically survival or, or death. And there was no way that David could have, David was always looking for understanding between the two of them on the ship. And Cliff was reticent and unresponsive to David's, uh, what would you call it? Um, uh, what do you, what do you call it? Like uh, when I, when I, when you're having a, like an emotional tenet -tete with somebody and you're starting to, he's it, what he, he's just trying to he's trying to get in there he's trying to create a communication between them that's 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 more than just you know work related yeah. and uh cliff has no interest yeah. and and by the end of this he's forced that hand he's made it impossible for cliff to look at him without an emotional response and he's made a you know, he's made Cliff a very clear choice. So I think in that moment, he's just basically saying either, are you with me to finish this thing? Or is this going to be, it's going to end a different way. And he sort of put them 
both in the same situation in one sense. Um, like, you know, now 100%. we have shared trauma that we can both share. I guess the only difference is Cliff is having to live with the person who created his trauma. So, yes. Well, yeah. But he's, you know, he was sick of the platitudes and, mm -hmm. and not, not being understood and, 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 and being sort of like put in a box. And, and he was like, no, now you understand cliff now you can now you can choose but you now at least have a small understanding of what i've got what i'm going through yeah now josh you're no stranger to like dark and horrific pieces of like storytelling and, and filmmaking yeah. um how different was approaching this to how you've approached things in the past or was it a similar sort of things you tapped into well i mean i think that this is uh as messed up and dark as anything i've ever done um but there's my work has always been kind of a progression of the same ideas which is i want to push my understanding of people beyond what i've what i what i knew before so the challenge is the most interesting thing to me i never want to play the same thing twice so there are things that i've done that have been dark but nothing quite like this, you know? Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I found it, I, I find, I find that I find David to be uh, a really inspiring character at the beginning. And, and especially as he was written um, this sort of, forward thinking uh open and optimistic intelligent scientific man uh who has kind of the most unspeakable thing happen to him and disintegrates and i always love that i love it i love a character with a big arc and so i mean you don't get much bigger than that so it was it was it was fun to kind of go there and the challenge of working on something with charlie is that uh, I mean, I've always loved the show and I thought like, I can't mess this up. Like this has got to be of the same quality of all these other, all these other um, performances that I've seen in, in Black Mirror. And so th there was that pressure there. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the, the, the trick for me in this world was to find a clarity of purpose and make that obvious without making it a pat story because you could look at this from a lot of different way a lot of different angles and i've heard different people hypothesize different things and i've heard charlie talk about it himself and what he what he was thinking about when he wrote it and it's funny how many different opinions and different ways of viewing these actions come up um and the ambiguity of it even though it is pretty cut and dry by the end it's still like i guess the ambiguity of the of uh, uh of 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 well the questions of why it's set up and the way that it's set up mm. i like that they're unanswered you know like why is it the 1960s why why do these two characters sort of seem so similar and so dissimilar there are a lot of answers that charlie has and i like that audiences can have their own sort of uh, understanding of it and so i just had to come at come at it from my very clear perspective and hope that people kind of would come along with me um and come along with cliff's character and lana's character and get sucked in to the point that when the kind of horrible stuff happens at the end it's devastating but it's also sort of yeah yeah it's i mean i don't i don't i don't know it's it it just that was a long way of saying like I just had to like make the character as emotionally realistic as possible. Yeah. And I, and I think like Black Mirror is a show uh, that delves so into like technology and, you know, you're going into different replicas of bodies and it's just space, space travel and three year missions, all these sorts of things. But at the same time, the stories are so human and they're about yeah. human characters and humanity and humans choices what do you think 
the lesson was from your episode of Black Mirror? What do we learn about humans? What's something maybe you learned, Josh? From- well, I, what I was just trying to say is that I don't want to tell people what to think of it. <laughs> you well, know, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So from inhabiting David, was there something you learned about yourself or, or like something that you took from hmm. taking on that role? <laughs> character I don't, well i mean never go to space um <laughs> you know like i find it I, I i the isolation and the loneliness was so palpable in the in this piece you know it, it, like appreciate your family and friends is like all that i get out of it um and i also find it you know uh, I, I as a, as much as I like kind of admire Charlie's work generally, being in the middle of it, there there were very few kind of funny you know moments for the characters, but we were able to make such sort of fun with the with the scenes and push them to places that I didn't feel like anybody was willing to go at the beginning, and then we all sort of encouraged each other to get to a point where it was it was becoming kind of more it would you know the energy was crackling and i find like i find that sort of filmmaking to be relevatory just for me generally and and you know i have family i have a bunch of kids and i find it you know lately just going away to do work i don't want to just go away and do anything like i want to make sure that my time away from them is actually worthwhile and this one really fed me you know because it was just it was such rich material you could go so deep into it so i don't that's not really an answer about why david what david meant to me because i feel like yeah he's uh, he's allegorical in, in a certain sense but he's not i don't see a lot of parallels between you know what he's going through and my life and i hope i never do yes yeah, that's, you know? that's a good thing josh um yeah but- as an actor, when you approach characters, is this like whatever role it is, is this something that's particularly important for you uh, in what you look for and what you try to, uh, in how you approach that character? Well, yeah, I mean, I find that, it, well, I mean, there there are similarities in different, in, in different uh, productions in how I approach a character, but uh, I guess what attracts me to a character generally is that it's, something that i haven't tried before um and that it's uh, and that it's scary enough that i feel like i'm going to have to give everything i have to 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 go to the places that this character needs to go in order for this to really work and i'm gonna have to figure it out as i go along you know like i'm gonna have to figure it out beforehand but obviously time for research on this was very minimal. Like I was asked to do this and about two weeks later we were shooting. So I, but on, but on other productions, I'd like to do a lot of research and just get to understand the character because I find it fascinating to, uh, you know, that's the most fascinating part of our job really is to kind of start to understand these people, the empathy side of it. And, um, so I always I, I, I'm more attracted to people that I don't quite understand. So I guess what it is, I'm attracted to characters I don't quite understand. And um, and I guess that helps you, yeah, that, that helps with perspective and understanding different people and stuff like that. That's really cool, Josh. Um, we're an awards website at Gold Derby. Um, Black Mirror has had success at the Emmy Awards before, um, but somewhere else where you've been is something that's had some success is Oppenheimer, which just won yeah. Best Picture at the Oscars. And just what does it mean to you to have been part of a film that has been um, now recognised by the industry as the best film of the year? And also just um, what did it mean to be part of that project in general? It felt, it felt amazing to be a part of the project and to be able to go to work every day with those terrific actors and um loving working with chris and emma and just the crew that the crew that he has are people that he implicitly trust trusts and he keeps the crew very small so it's like working on an independent film but just of massive scale uh so i had so much fun making it and then the movie having being part of that whole barbenheimer phenomenon last year was 
bizarre but wonderful just to get people excited about the film and the fact that it's been so wildly successful and then successful again at the awards is just i think a testament to how much great work chris has done over his career and that people were ready to really award him with something and the fact that the film is also wonderfully made i for for me it was the easiest thing in the world because i was nominated for anything so i just was able to show up watch everybody else like freak out about whether or not they were going to have to go up and make a speech. And all I had to do was sit back and have a glass of champagne and be like, well done guys. You know, that was, that was, that was my, my, my full input. So for me, it was easy and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, just to be, a just to be on that ride. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Josh, uh, if you were to uh, use one word to describe black mirror beyond the sea, what word would you use? Ooh. Um, this is a tough question. I mean, the first the first thing that comes to mind is is dark, but that's not that's not good enough. It's unex unexpected. Unexpected is the right word, and I think it's the right word for all of all of Black Mirror generally. I think that how he's able to continually kind of upend people's expectations you know year after year and what i love about him is that he takes as much time as he needs to when it's not like coming together in the way that he feels it's, it should come together he'll take years off and then he'll come back and it'll be great again and everybody's hungry to see it again and now i think he's on a run i think he's doing another one now and like you know we'll have more black mirrors soon and that's that's exciting to me um i love the show i've watched him from the very beginning uh, i was working with rory kinnear when the first one came out and he told me, I don't know if you saw it, the first one where he played the prime minister who had to, you know, have sexual relations with the pig. Did you see that one? Yeah. 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 So that's that I was w working with Rory at the time and no one knew what black mirror was. And he was like, just don't, you know, I don't know if you should watch it. And I, I did and was just like blown away. I was like, this is a genius. Um, and so I've been a huge fan for a long time. And, and, to see it continually sort of reinvent itself. It's just, you know, playing with people's expectations. It's always unexpected. Well, Josh, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Uh, people go and go thank to goldderby.com to follow uh, the Emmy Awards and all the best of luck for the Emmy Awards for. Oh, Black thank Europe. you. Thanks a lot.